what is up bros and welcome back now the last time we did a video like this was when we hit 1 million subs and that was almost exactly one year ago so it's the perfect time to do another one so i'm super proud to bring you 100 ranked tips and tricks for 2021 now in no particular order we have a ton of tricks from three four spawn peaks to how to literally do a 720 frost spin while falling from a hatch for a trick shot setup and these are stemming from pro league myself things i've learned from getting slammed with and ranked legends in my discord like gustin Josh, Trans, plus lots of others who help me trick hunt. And while you'll see a ton of brand new tricks, you might see some that look familiar. And that's because I also took some of my favorite tricks that we've done in this past year that still work. And I've included it in this so that I can bring you the best list of tricks to use in ranked Rainbow Six Siege. Huge shout out to my long-term sponsor, the goats at G Fuel, where Sour Phaseberry and Watermelon literally helped me finalize the last 12 hours in this video. I have a link down below if you'd like to check them out too. And now without further ado, Let's get into trick number one. Starting off with the brand new bandit trick, did you know that if you approach the deploy option while using bandit from either the side or opposite side of a reinforced wall, you can place them further away or at such an off angle that they can be completely hidden from counters like Cali. It's nuts and this works on a ton of different places. Next up, easily the best hiding spot of 2021. Take out the bottom shelves the way I do, chip out the higher ones so that your head can go behind it, and if Jackal is banned, it's pretty much gonna be a guaranteed kill. Now, if someone somehow survives getting past the closet and makes their way into statuary, then this rat ledge spot is sure to make them rage. Definitely easiest with the shotgun, you can shoot out the back layer of the wall and then you'll be able to hide and vault over at any time you want. Next up, here's two parkour ways that we can take advantage of Yana's hologram decoys not taking fall damage. We can get a ton of intel and all of these are really, really quick to execute. Up next, we have the most annoying camera to try to take care of. When thrown perfectly, it's 100% invincible from explosives, bullets. The only way that attackers could get rid of it is if they throw like a Twitch drone or a Sam cam up here and then zap it. And the majority of the time, they're not even gonna see it. So just overall great cam. All right, so this vault prom disappeared for a little bit, but if you break the vase in the exact way that you see me do, you'll get a vault prompt and then you can actually parkour your way up the vase and then get back on the freezer after it disappeared for a little bit. Jumping over to border, yeah, similar concept. If you place a shield, you can actually still vault up here and then you can vault over to the locker, you get a ton of different cool angles. You can literally get bullets to go all the way down the east balcony. Now, if you're tired of using barbed wire in the traditional way, another way that you can use barbed wire pretty much on any map is by placing them at either crouch or height level. You can make yourself tiny little pixel peaks that are really hard to see through. If you're trying to spice it up with Rook, then you can do the same thing. A little bit more situational. You got to find the right angle that kind of lines up where you want to hold an anchor. This spot over here on bank is actually insane and really difficult to see. And you can watch all directions from staff room. Now, if you watched the most recent video, you've probably seen this, the most insane chalet pre-fire spawn kill spot that I've seen since the map has come out. You can kill them like five steps off a of spawn, so it's not even illegal to do. Oh my God. 
Now, this one has the potential to go all the way to the path that attackers run from from their spawn, but being realistic, if you're lucky, you're probably gonna like hit them in the toe at most. But where it is gonna be super useful is if there's anybody that's holding angles outside of trophy window, you're gonna have a ton of different opportunities. And if you're using somebody like Goyo or Cade, you're gonna be able to do a ton of damage by just landing one or two shots. The best spawn peak on border is up next and it can be done in two ways. The first one involves you standing by the red toolbox and looking out of the pixel between the door frame and the window. This line of sight goes right along the east side of the vent outside and if any attacker runs here it's going to be a free headshot. Option 2 for this spawn peak is similar but you're going to break open the left hand side of the hall wall and then stand back in the tunnel that is now indoors after the rework. Going over to Villa for one of my favorite spawn peaks that we did last season, you can vault over a shield, stand on the little bar, and shoot anybody running from ruins. Alright, so next up, new mirror stacking trick. A little bit complicated, but it works in a ton of different areas. In fact, this works on any site on border. You need an item to slightly elevate yourself. This works on either it being like a little wire mat or a reinforced hatch like you're going to see me do here. Next step is to either shoot the floor or the soft floor, and then you're gonna be able to actually drop down just like a slight, slight inch more, and you'll be able to place one right below it. As long as you're able to find something to slightly elevate yourself on, then you're good to go. So if you guys find other spots to do this on other maps, let me know down below, I'm super curious. I remember when Chalet first came out, there used to always be a defender that thought they were clever and was like crouching on top of this barrel holding angles, but you can use this pre-fire to get a free headshot on anybody that you find there. So there's a ton of really good vertical angles you can do into bakery, but did you know that you can open up this floor that goes through the little mining machine and then you have a ton of different metal railings that are actually going to protect you and make you that much harder to see. Really good angle to go for, you can watch pretty much the entire bakery wall. Next up, coming at you with four different Pro League C4s that you're going to be able to use. I'm going to shut up for a few seconds and let the commentators take it from here. You'll love to see this. And there's two members of DG that are there, primed and ready. Can you give a call? There's Nyx. Down it goes. Oh! Boom! <laughs> I can't believe Say goodbye works. to Nyx. Perfectly lined up. Wow. You, and I like how we all get a tutorial for how to do that now. You could week, and it seems like perhaps that honeymoon period in this EUL for BDS is over, and Virtus Pro looking to capitalize upon that with some aggressive plays of their own. Well, let's just say Bree Day is looking a lot more human right now, and this will be the BDS that you'd normally see when everybody is just being average. Oh, goodbye, Shaco. Just sent it to the roof and straight away sent back off again pressure underneath but crazy papian isn't in the right position and he knows it but he doesn't want to expose himself the plant will begin number two will pick up yura this is the perfect log through surely that catches oh my goodness another double it's going to be up to the attackers to clean with two seconds left can they do it no they cannot and wow i take it back crazy papian was in the very good position to deny that. Rest of the team is performing admirably, and in fact, we're actually seeing some really good play from Oxygen, but Bolo there it is. works double duty. You talked about the C4 earlier in a third kill from Jason Bolo Doty. All right, so if Bolo doesn't kill you with a 3000 IQ C4 from around a reinforced wall, you can actually use Fuse to use his like radius of the explosives to get rid of bandit batteries that are on the other side of this wall. If you want an extra layer of security before somebody vaults into closet and gets slammed by you in your hiding spot, you can have your friend throw a C4 over this reinforced wall onto anybody that might be hesitating to jump in through this window or even droning outside. Next up, we got two really strong Malusi web spots. This first one could be used with a C4 combo if that last one looked a little bit too complicated. Or you can just place it here and go die spawn peeking and even later in the round you'll still have an impact on it. First one's on cafe, second one's going to be on coastline. Let me know what you guys think.
This one's not really for the wub spot. It just kind of goes hand in hand with try to use C4 from above. You can do it in multiple different ways, sound cues, cameras, all the same from doing it from below. And it's really, really strong and even more unexpected. We got this really, really strong camera that's really unexpected, really hard to see. And you can even see the feet all the way into pillar box. And because of the angle, there's that little overhang in the door. Attackers aren't gonna even be able to see it. And you're gonna be able to stand there, scan them, use it for pre-play C4s, how, whatever you wanna do. Going back over to border, we got the big brain of Dangleberries who found this camera and it's so simple and so incredibly strong. Honestly, even if I looked straight at it, I probably wouldn't even realize it was a cam. So when border came out, Bikini and I went in and completely destroyed the map. We found some crazy angles together. I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ones. This next one over on Repel, you're going to actually be able to see the bathroom hall and into the bathroom entrance while people that might be rotating from workshop into bathroom aren't even going to be able to see it. Next up, the crazy spawn kill that we found. I haven't shared this with absolutely anybody yet. It is a little bit situational depending on where the attackers are running, but I found that this actually counters when they try to go do priest pre-fire really, really good because a lot of times attackers are closer to the wall. So if you're defending customs, you can kind of anticipate the jail wall being opened up and you can get this other setup right away so that as soon as the thermite opens the wall, you're on metal stairs and you're slapping anybody that thinks they're genius and holding angles through the tank. Next up, the big brain way to use either thermite or ace. Similar concept to when you use this on the floor, but when you find yourself on a door with a hard floor, you can do this on the door too. Did you guys know that if you find a soft hatch by a soft floor, you can actually silent breach it with ace. You would think that this makes a ton of noise, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't. You gotta make sure you break the force so that the metal rods are going straight to the hatch and then you can place the ace straight in the middle and anyone below you won't hear it being detonated. Next up, if you find yourself with a soft floor with like an electrified hatch, this actually doesn't affect ace at all. I mean, you can't place it directly on the hatch, but because the arms of the Selma extend out, you can still place two ace charges just on the floor next to it, and it's going to completely destroy the hatch. Next up, we got Macy J's big brain play where he showed that you can actually break 90 degree angle reinforced walls with a single thermite charge. This is kind of a similar concept to what we did on border on the door next to a reinforced wall, but this just takes it to a whole nother level. Next up, elevated Maverick trick on Chalet. You can get on top of the snowmobile, see through the rotation into sight. It's pretty crazy. When Chalet first came out, I was doing this every day. Next up, say you don't have an ace and you need to counter a Cade electric claw on a hatch. If the floor is soft, you can simply break out the top layer of flooring, drop a nade or another explosive in there, and it's going to destroy it. All right, Cade, I'm sorry. You probably feel useless. You keep getting countered. But good for him, in games room, you can actually place an electric hob behind the wall and there's pretty much no way to destroy it unless a twitch drone or bullet gets a line of sight on it. And that's a big if they can even find it because it's pretty much invisible behind the vault wall. You don't have to worry about Cali getting this. There's no way it can be destroyed. Worst case scenario, it gets Thatcher EMP'd and disabled for a few seconds and then it'll just pop right back up. Another way that you can protect a Kate Electric Lot and also use it to electrify a ton of stuff at the same time is actually placing it underneath of the Goyo shield. It's going to electrify the shield plus anything else it touches. Now going back, we're going to counter Maverick again, this time with Tachanka. Shout out to Get Flanked, I believe he discovered this one first. And if you break the bottom layer of flooring, you can actually just shoot out wherever the Maverick goes up above. The charge is going to fall in between the walls and burn his feet. Situational, but title says it all. Three Tachanko launcher spots. First up, we got Clubhouse, then we got Villa and Coastline.
If you're not a fan of those because you feel like they're too risky to go for, here's a super practical one to get rid of anybody that's going for a hard breach outside of Chalet Snowmobile's garage. Next up, we got two options for destroying this interior cam on the console front desk. Normally, unless you have a Twitch, this camera stays up until really late in the round or if they're defending on the bottom when you do a top clear. Taking out this camera will stop defenders from knowing at least what direction you're coming from and it's really helpful. First one's from the south side, second one's from the north side. They're both actually really easy to do, so here you go. Now, I'm guessing this one is going to get patched really, really soon, but for whatever reason, from certain angles, we can still push the diffuser underneath of objects after we plant it with drones. Next drone trick is, did you know that regular and Flores drones can actually vault up reinforced walls? You're going to need to just make sure you're jumping up it from the side where the spikes stick through, and you're going to be able to parkour over areas and just have drones come from really unexpected directions. If there's not a soft area above the wall, you can do this with a Habana and get it so that you can jump drones through any wall. My favorite parkour drone spot on Oregon is to actually go from like the top attic balcony, jump it through the bedroom window and get anybody that's hiding behind the bunkhead to run out. A lot of time you can catch them in the crossfire. Next up, the main topic from our previous siege video. You can actually pre-place or like pre-fire for as drones in a way on prepped windows. This makes it that when you melee or vault through it, there's two drones plus a body flying at them. Really unexpected. Most of the time, you're going to want to just break the window, have the drones go, and then wide peek it. But yeah, just a pretty clever strat. Jumping over to coastline, we got this spot where you can kind of pre-place your Flores drone. It's going to drive itself all the way to the defender. It's going to help distract, and then you're going to be able to make an easy push to take him out. If you destroy the floor, you can actually get like that extra half an inch lower because you broke the top layer of tile. And then from there, you're actually going to be able to shoot through the pixels in the wood behind the throne. You can watch two of the common entrances and you're going to look invisible to the attackers. Next up, solid roamer angle to help you deny kitchen hatch breach. Most of the times they're gonna drone out bars, so you're probably not gonna wanna sit here, but you can set it up, go roam somewhere else, and then check this angle back when you know that the bar is safe and they're pushing kitchen. That one is a little bit too aggressive for your style. We have another kind of aggressive anchor spot with a similar setup. Now this bar is hard to shoot out, so you can use an explosive like an impact grenade or if you want to waste your C4, totally up to you. But then you can play on the stairs. You can get angles through the bar onto anybody that's pushing through the bar, if that makes sense. I said bar like five times. Now this is a old pro league clip and I saw this a while ago and for whatever reason it's just always stuck with me. Flying prone in the doorway, waiting for somebody to repel on up. This is such a big brain play, it's a brain out of body play. And it'll work because it's such a big brain play. Go, down goes Fultz. <laughs> and he, I guarantee you the comms of Fultz is like, why is he there? Next one kind of goes hand in hand. If you are defending the office, you can actually put this bullet hole in the office desk. And this goes straight out to that cash door that Nyx was laying in in the previous tip. Five second sledge tip to get a perfect angle down onto people playing in service entrance on coastline. Keep in mind that you can get angles that go through the metal railings really easily and it's not even hard to see. Now a more common situation that you'll find is an anchor playing on catwalk. So here's a couple really good capital bolt spots, first one on clubhouse, second one on villa to take out anchors in really common spots. You can elevate yourself on this red hand truck and get angles on anybody vaulting by the fireplace window in master bedroom and they're going to get absolutely slapped.
speaking of elevated angles, we have one of the best elevated spots in Siege right now over on Border. If you sprint and then go prone, you can actually elevate yourself on this cardboard box to see over the reinforced wall. You can even see to the new catwalk on Border and the attackers, unless they go prone, they can't see you. Now, instead of doing a vertical angle, we're gonna do a horizontal one. This one goes through five walls, like 20 rooms. You got, I mean, you guys know the deal by now. Absolutely insane. If you don't wanna be that far back, then you can push forward into the bar. You can see in this clip that I'm gonna land it right here. Oh my Ooh. God, oh my God, bro. <laughs> Another super long horizontal angle. This one's gonna be on bank. It goes from office hall all the way to the back alley window, which a lot of attackers come from. All right, back to the elevated ones. This one's gonna be an angle that goes from big tower through the hatch all the way down to the entrance and meeting hall. The goal here, definitely combo somebody, spawn peek someone from big tower, then check this angle, slap their teammate. They'll get called a rat and chat and half their team will quit. So win-win. A lot of people do a C4 throw to go for construction spawn kills from the tower door, but actually a better spot to jump out is the tower window. You land on the secondary rooftop. It's faster to throw and honestly, it's a way easier angle. C4 trick shot time. If more than one person spawns vents on skyscraper, then this area is super high traffic and it takes a couple of seconds just to walk up to the wall to start the repel. So if you land it, it's definitely gonna hit someone. All right, super simple C4 spawn kill time. Literally just lean left, put your crosshairs where you see mine. And if anybody spawns tower and runs to their right, then they're gonna die to the C4. This one's not a spawn kill, but this goes to an even higher traffic area and a spot that has a good chance to get multi kills because this is where attackers stack up before the final push in. The C4 goes up to the floor above out the top opening, which you need to make sure you destroy the wood design on it first. And it's going to then land by dragon and you'll probably get called a hacker because it's going to look like you teleported a C4 there from sight. A big brain way that you can use Goyo is by anticipating that they're going to destroy it, take advantage of the explosive proximity, and then use angles from below or other openings that you know it's going to create. You know attackers can't help themselves. If they see the opportunity to shoot it, they're going to 100% do it. These next two are angles that Nico showed me on the cafe rework and they've just always stuck with me. I find them really strong and they're just fun to go for anytime that you're playing cafe. First one is an angle to deny the hatch drop or anybody pushing new balcony. And this next one's kind of a spawn kill, but more of just an early kill as they approach the wall. Next up, two crazy back alley spawn peaks that you can go for. First one's kind of a brave run out. You don't want to stay out here too long because if they climb up the ladder and they run above you, then they could see you obviously. But you don't have to worry about bullets coming through the fence because they literally can't. Second one, you stay inside by the desk, lean left, and you can actually see through the crack in the fence. Same concept as last time. This time it's going to be two crazy Christmas market spawn kill options on cafe. First one, you're standing inside of the little bakery through the wall and it's gonna go through the window of the black truck. Second one, you're actually gonna be in the hall going through multiple walls and they're both crazy. And yeah, I keep stacking like multiple tricks into one trick. So I'm kind of like reverse clickbaiting myself. So I think that this definitely adds up to more than hundred tricks. Next up, underrated camera on Villa. You can literally just chuck them into the vines and even if the camera gets unlucky and lands behind a leaf, you can still scan and spot through and might actually even be better because it's harder to see. Next up, we got a Sam cam that literally goes into a secret room down in Arsenal. And before anybody calls this a glitch, it's literally not. It's just behind the brick wall and kitchen and it lands in the lockers and Arsenal room. You can see it and shoot it. There's nothing blocking it. There's no wall breaches, nothing weird going on, but it is going to be in a really unexpected spot that people might tend to not look at. Next up, 2000 IQ shield spot. You can place shields on top of items and use them as kind of like a portable mirror window. This one on the bed when placed correctly actually has a gap in the bottom and you can shoot out the door onto the balcony. You can actually take advantage of the little slits between the way that the shields unfold and you can actually get bullets in between there. First one's going to be on cafe, second one's going to be on clubhouse catwalk. They're both incredibly strong spots. 
Another strategy with shields is actually by reinforcing a wall going on the other side breaking the layer of soft wall and then placing a shield next to it. You can take advantage of the crack because like half your body will fit inside of it and you can create some really, really unexpected angles. You can actually do this really annoying deployable cover strat that makes it really difficult to vault in going towards the sideways one. You can see vaulting into the weight room was really easy, but getting out is just a lot more complicated. It's still there, but it has a ton of potential to delay a lot of time. Maybe Goyo's not the pick, get a teammate to use the shield and then it won't be destroyed as easy either. Jumping over to theme park, if you place a shield where you see me do, you can actually shoot over the reinforced walls to get bullets that go through barrels out the window, super high traffic area, and a common entry point. Now Ubisoft has been going through and blocking a lot of drone holes, which I actually agree with, it's a good change. This one here on Chalet still isn't blocked and if you break the plant you can get angles on watching the stairs for anybody coming up. This works both ways though, if you're an attacker you can actually get the crossfire on the dining room table. Yeah, title says it all again. If you want to, you can put your 200 pound body on top of this phone, stand on it and get a crazy angle that goes outside a bank. This elevated angle is a little bit more realistic. Just break the items the way you see me do. You can place bulletproof cameras, evil eyes, or just sit up on top of here with a shotgun and take out the top of anybody's head coming through bathroom. Playing Spiral Staircase is really common to watch the doorway. Uh, most of the time I see people playing on the left side of the statue, but if you play on the right side, you can actually get this perfect line of sight that's almost impossible to see through on the little gap of the statue. If you want, you could have your buddy come up top of here, break out the tile that you see me do. You can have this really difficult to see angle that can deny common plant spots, smoke pushes, whatever through the main door. If you're playing the top floor of Consulate, something that's really annoying to deal with is upside down repellers on meeting room window. So if you break out the floor where you see me do, you can actually counter upside down repels really easily from all the way downstairs. Next up, we're gonna be combining three border hiding spots into this one trick. All three of these work really good no matter what site you're defending on border. Especially if you like Cav, I'm very confident you're going to find high success with them because I already have too. Up next, the most random trick in this video. Did you guys know that you can ping Yana clones just like a standard gadget? If you're feeling ballsy and you don't want to shoot it, you can try to ping it and see if it's real or not. If you guys have time, you can actually put an extra layer of protection on cap can traps. You can barricade a door, break it down, and then place the cap can trap behind the little spikes. You can also destroy the floor and make it that much harder to see. Up next, another anti-melee parkour wub spot that you can do in a really common spot. At least make them waste a bunch of utility before they drop down. And if they don't, then they're going to be completely trapped in the bathroom for free kills. Yeah, this one's the magic pillow angle. You can tell that as the video goes on, I'm getting more and more creative with my titles, can't you? Yeah, your face is biting the pillow and the attackers can't see you, so it's pretty nuts. Alright, so three frost mats that you can hide. First one's gonna be on border, second one's gonna be on villa, third one's gonna be on theme park. In certain spots, you can melee the floor and then place frost mats right below it through the hole, make them that much more hidden. Keep in mind that that spot on villa only works on that section of the staircase. If you go a floor up, it's not gonna work. My favorite's definitely over on theme park though because you can place them in the center of these blue rugs and it doesn't even look like it's weird. Phase Frost, if you want to do a 720 Frost spin, you can place it partway on a hatch, go and pick it up, you're going to do like 50 spins and then look at that, pick it up, trick shot, then you entered Phase Clan, congratulations. Since Habana was changed, we can now select our two pellets to be placed vertically and you can make perfect crouch holes with a little bit of practice and six pellets. This is a 360 SAM cam that you can use to overlook offices on border. And with all the tricks that have taken place in this room, this is going to be really helpful. And it's good because you think that it's out in the open, but it actually blends in pretty decently well. 
If you ash charge the top frame of a door, you can actually just put your face in the door and you won't take any damage. Here, take a look at this one. I have 36 HP. Hot breach it. It's two inches away from my head. Still have 36 HP. Now, if you feel like going from 100 health to zero health for a YOLO rotation, you can actually drop on top of this light and only take one HP damage. C4s behind windows and high traffic areas, they're still incredibly quiet. This has never gotten changed and it still works insanely well. If you don't feel like roaming or going for a spawn kill, you can make this insane three floor angle to deny the entry all while you're close to sight on bank. My favorite thing that me and Bikini have ever messed around with, it's his insane spawn peak that he found on coastline. It goes from bathroom all the way to the back of Ruin's wall. Another nice spawn peak is if you go prone by white vans, there's actually a gap between the bumper and the vehicle. You can use it for spawn peaks. The most successful one that I found is by far on consulate. This is a really strong mirror setup that Pre showed me on border. You can use the solid half wall plus a mirror on a soft wall to stay totally protected and completely deny the entry. If you're in a hurry, you can vault in on the new balcony on border, put your cross here, here Throw your drone and run away. You're gonna have great intel for the rest of the round, no matter if your teammates are dead or alive or if you need to check it for flanks. By shooting out the books and then running up the cement pallets, you can actually fit yourself inside of the locker for the best hiding spot in theme park. Dangleberry's found a way that if you kind of crouch walk off the edge so that you get a little drop and then look at the TV corner, you can actually vault up to get some really nice, unexpected, unorthodox angles. You go all the way from Geisha Wall to Dragon, or if anybody's pushing sight, you can shoot them in the top of the head. Alright bro, I'm getting tired. This one's going to be called the frying pan angle for free faces. If you do the similar thing as the last one, kind of like drop off the counter a little bit, you can stand up, get a perfect angle over the microwave and deny delivery entrance. Shout out to the legend Gustus for these next couple. You can actually jump up on top of this printer or fax machine. I prefer putting a castle in this doorway so that nobody shoots you in the nuts. But then from there, if anybody takes a left out of the alley access, they're running into your line of sight to give you a free kill. Bruh, what did I do to this title? Anyways, yeah, you can shoot feet underneath the couch through hookah out onto the balcony. A lot of people don't realize you can do that. Just shoot out the pillow, and then you add a clear line of sight. Shout out to the smiley face on the wall also. This one's just a really good off angle. Like, I mean, honestly, if I'm in like a 1v3, I ain't, I ain't gonna clutch that by doing normal angles. So if you vault up on top of this, you can actually deny a plant, smoke push, whatever through here, and it's really hard to see. It's not gonna bring purple tarps back, but it's the closest we can get, boys. If you've made it this far, I truly cannot say how much I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're listening to this right now, I truly appreciate you so much. I cannot wait. In a week, I'm gonna have another absolute banger video for you. And I'm super stoked to see what you guys think. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing. It is free. And if you don't like the next video, you can always change your mind. I'll see you guys all very soon in the next video. I love you all. Peace. Secret bonus tip, if you want Ubisoft or Rainbow Six Siege's attention on Twitter, all you gotta do is break their game and tweet it at them with something super sarcastic. Depending on who's on the account that day, you'll probably get roasted accordingly.